of a unicorn here. So I was listening uh, to an Asian American woman on TikTok who just judging by the way that she spoke, she seemed like she was a very culturally Asian, but with a very much a white orientation. I would not, I don't see on her like an Asian who went to an inner city school or who has, you know, a ton of African-American friends who are cultured, you know, as far as African-American culture goes. And basically she was telling everyone why they should not be judging pick and shaming people for shaming pick And I said in her comments, because this was on TikTok, that pick are a group of women to be shamed and and listen until you can understand the actual definition of the word according to African-American vernacular English, you need to be quiet on this topic. So many times words and phrases that African-Americans develop by the time it enters, enters into mainstream culture, it takes on a whole new meaning. And it's like, we didn't mean that by that. For example, remember the word hookup? Like, like oh, you know, Latuan got hooked up with Dequisha and, you know, now they're a couple. Saying the two of them um, hooked up or were hooked up, that didn't mean they were having sex. They could have only, you know, held hand and maybe pecked or something. But now hooking up, because it entered into mainstream, you know, pop culture, now it means a one night stand. Now it means someone you had sex with. So when you say to somebody, yeah, you know, me and my boy, we about to hook up. Now you have to rearrange it because people are like, oh, so you're you're gay. And it's like, nah, man, I'm just about to go see him. Like, you know, like we have our own or, or the hookup. Right. So like somebody gave you a great deal on something, you know, or a, a discount, a coupon as something. Right. And now you have to be careful with the word because it has been stolen from its context, right? This is the problem with, you know, culture vultury. So I'm looking at this woman and her argument was like, you know, you shouldn't shame pick me's because in reality, we all want to get picked. Don't say that you do your makeup and hair every day just because you want to look nice. You know, like I know that you want to get picked. And sis, that's a fact. My dear Asian American woman who has a very white American orientation, that's a fact. We all want to get picked, but that's not what a pick me is. You think cooking and cleaning for a man is being a pick me? It's not. You think doing his laundry and ironing his clothes is being a pick me? It's not. You think doing your hair and makeup and going to the gym to sweat so you look good for that man is being a pick me? It's not. You think being ultra feminine is being a pick me? It's not. You think being submissive to your partner or surrendering or cooperating, you think that's being a pick me? It's not. A pick me is a woman who was willing to sabotage other women, men, and children for the sake of a man or a group of men that she is seeking validation from. For example, you know the auntie who when you tell her you've been molested by your uncle, she slaps you in the face and says, don't you ever say that again? My brother would do no such thing. That's a pick me. You know, the women who trick the kids into sex trafficking because kids on average trust women more than they trust men. That's a pick me. A huge population of uh, incarcerated women. I used to uh, do a little volunteer work in a couple of women's prisons. They were in there because they were pick me's. They were locked up, some of them for life because... They were pick and they were willing to do anything, including taking penitentiary chances for the approval of a man. Do you see how that is a danger? That somebody can be so insecure and have such low self-esteem to the point of envy and, 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 and jealousy that it, it rocks their world to the point where this is what they resort to? Do you get it? Like, look. I remember I took a couple of years of Japanese, right? And I remember before I knew anything about Japanese, because this was in high school, I asked somebody, oh, you know, a movie came out about a geisha. And I was like, oh, what's a geisha, 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 what's that? And they're like, oh, that's a hoe. And I was like, oh, okay. 
And an Asian girl told me that, you know, it's a prostitute. And I was like, oh, okay. So do you know how that translated to me? That translated to me as streetwalker, as giving head in the parking lot, as STDs, as strangled to death in somebody's car, as trains with with multiple men, um, on crack. Like, like that's what that translated to me as. Now, when I took my Japanese class and I learned more about geishas, I was so impressed with these women. I mean, telling me it was a prostitute or an escort or a hoe was the poorest translation because I I had nothing else to reference. Like, look, geishas are top class, top quality women. They are literally trained from their teens to be elite women for elite men. I mean, these women, nothing cheap about them. You couldn't get a 20, 30, $40 uh, head job. From, from one of these women. The makeup elite. We literally have something called the kabuki brush because of the geisha. The kabuki brush has went all over the world because of the geisha and the way she applies her makeup, the femininity she has. She is literally educated on current events and historical events so that she can be a great conversationalist for incredibly high value men from the upper echelons of her society and other societies. The way they dance, the way they bow, the way they greet, the way they serve, the way they speak, the way they sing, the way they entertain, their stage presence. There's so much that goes into being a geisha. Even if she would have said, oh, a geisha is a showgirl, I would have still thought deja vu, even though they're on the level of, I mean, I would say even above like a Las Vegas showgirl. They're just, they're classy and they can get bought out of the game. What do I mean by that? I mean, let's say you got this geisha, maybe she's 23 and this is her first time, you know, actually, because they will train you for a while before they can put you out there to be a blunder, right? They don't want you to have bad manners or mess up, spill the tea. You got to learn how to pour the tea the right way. You got to learn how to collect the cups and stack them up the right way. You got to open the door from this side, take off your shoes at this point, bow at that point, snap, snap, snap. Okay, girls, get it together, right? <laughs> like, like it's, it's classy, What they do is very regal. And you'll have a girl where a guy is just like, oh, no, I think I just met my wife. Let's go. It could be the first the the first guy she met in the last one. And, you know, some of the women, they prefer their life. They prefer their peace. They love their lifestyle. But it's hard work. Have you ever seen somebody put one of them darn kimonos on? It's not the same as putting on red fishnets and stilettos. It's not the same. Lord is not the same. <laughs> Have you seen the way that the ritual in which they put on their makeup? It, it, it's not the same. Why am I saying all of this about gay shits? Wh- why am I saying all this? Because when somebody translated for me outside of the Japanese context, I put my own spin on it because I wasn't familiar with the culture. And I'm telling you, my dear Asian American sister with a white cultural orientation, that you don't know what a pick me is. Because if you knew what a pick me is, you would understand that these they, these are shame worthy things. Just like it's like telling somebody not to shame a you know how do I say this rhymes with a uh, scrape scrapist. It's like telling somebody not to shame one of them. Like these women are setup artists. These women will will hold down a small child while it's being assaulted. For the guy that she wants to be validated by. You know, when I went to Urban Dictionary, because I was going to say, oh, Google it. um, I assumed that because Urban Dictionary is, you know, it's it's not owned by us. I assumed that they would have a poor definition of the word. Like they have a lot of poor definitions because they just have a a group of people who will approve or disapprove, whatever it is. And, you know, it's crazy because it's like a board of non-black people with a bunch of black words in here. Nevertheless, they actually have a decent definition, right? Or at least their top definition is, de- uh, is decent. It says a pick me is a woman that is willing to do anything for male approval. Anything, my dear Asian American sister. She will embarrass or throw other women under, under the bus to achieve this goal. 
For example, let's say it's you and your homegirl and you guys are out with a couple of guys and she says, hey, Asian American friend, remember when you were so broke I had to buy your lunch all freshman year? Are you even a citizen yet? And you're completely horribly embarrassed and the guys give her a high five because they think she's funny and she clowned you and, and hit a punchline and they liked it. That's a pick me. That's a girl you don't want to be your friend. That's a woman who is so derelict that she can be jealous of a child. I used to work at a school, an Islamic school, randomly enough, where there were grown women who were jealous of my second graders. Mad at them for having, you know, like, like church shoes, right? Like, like that clickety clack or whatever. Making them walk barefoot through the school because they're not supposed to have on high heels, even though the shoe had like a kitten heel, you know, tripping. That's a pick me. That's a pick me. When you're a teacher who can be that jealous of a student, especially a prepubescent one, or hell, a pubescent one, that's a pick me. When you can be that aunt who who doesn't who who defends the 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 child <laughs> in the family, the 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 uncle who's a perv and all that, like like that's a pick me. It's not just being good to a man it's being willing to do anything without moral compass without moral code for the approval of a man it, it's not the same as brown nosing like like a teacher's pet it's not the same sis yes we do all want to get picked but even the right even the ride or die is not the same as the pick me a pick me can can be a ride or die but a ride or die doesn't necessarily have to be a pick me but you wouldn't know that Unless you became versed in African-American vernacular. I, I don't like to see you guys teaching on subjects of ours that... Because I see that a lot of people, once it hits mainstream culture, you guys don't seem to be aware of the fact that it's AAVE. That's an acronym for African-American vernacular English. And you seem not to know that it comes from us when really you could just hashtag ask a black person or specifically because this is created by black women hashtag ask a black woman we will tell you but no it's not just about trying to be picked it's not just about getting your hair done and your makeup done and losing weight to attract a good man honey that's math that's science and that's a beautiful thing to keep yourself up whether it's for yourself or for your man or whoever hey kudos to you that's not a bad thing and some people, while they may not be a pick-me, they have pick-me qualities. And those are things to be ashamed of. But if you remove them from their cultural context, you wouldn't know that. So I just basically, I don't know, I commented under her video, like, you know, it, it's not up to you to say this. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's just like what I said earlier, the anecdotal, sto the anecdotal story that I told earlier about me and the word geisha. We would go all around, you know, my high school, or whatever, you know, calling, you know, actual streetwalkers geishas and, and they're nothing of the sort and they could never be. They don't have the looks, the class, the education, like nothing, the talent. But we just thought I meant how. And that's what we said. So... Look, I'm not one of those people who are going to tell you, oh, stop using the word blah, 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 because I, I, I'm, not, I'm not with that. I want you to use the word. I want you to feel comfortable. I just want you to know what it is before you use it. Because this is making, oh, it's just like, man, do I, do I really want to go there? No, because I don't want this video to be longer than 15 minutes. I don't really want to go there. Anyhow, um... Can I think of a celebrity pick me? Mm, I can't think of a celebrity pick me, but if I didn't already say this, I'll say it like this. I used, I told you, I, I think I already said this, where I used to volunteer at women's prisons, right? 98% of the women who were there were there because of a man. 98% of the women who were there were there because of a man. The leadership of a bad man, submitting to the leadership, seeking the validation of a bad man by doing criminal activity. Those were pygmies and women with pygmy qualities. Do you get it now? Do you see it? Does it make sense? 
when you hear Beyonce singing Cater to You or Mary J. Blige singing uh, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, that's not being a pygmy. That's classic womanhood and it's something to be honored and lifted up. But it's, it's the moral decrepitude of I'll do anything for this man. I will shoot this person. I will rob this person. I will involve myself and in, 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 just Lord, Lord, the, the boundarylessness of it all. The, the pick me's will to be validated by the male of her that she's seeking. It, it knows no bounds. These women will lie on you. These women will ruin your reputation. They will know you are right and say that you are wrong for the approval, just for a pat on the head from these men. They will steal your credit cards. They will take your debit card and give those men the money and then you know, like just sabotage you, get you kicked out of your house. You know, they got a crush on your boyfriend. Maybe he hits you. They will watch him hit you and then take his side. Like... There are millions of examples to give, but I, I think that the perfect, you know, way that to end this in summation is that a pygmy is a woman that's willing to do anything for male approval. And that's not okay. All right. So nobody's in trouble, nobody's, you know, a culture vulture or any of that kind of stuff. It's just like it's like me and the geisha word. I had to learn, you had to learn. Okay? Fair exchange. I'm up at a unicorn and I hope that was, I hope, I hope I wasn't too harsh. I hope that was nice and beneficial at the same time. Horns up. I'm out.